Abilify helps control symptoms of bipolar mania. Ask your doctor about Effexor XR. Paxil, the most prescribed medication of its kind. Prozac Weekly is here. Zoloft, a prescription. Seraphim. EMDD. And... Psychiatrists and drug companies don't hype psychiatric drugs only to fellow prescribers. They also pitch them straight to the end user, you, counting on you to walk into their offices and demand a prescription. The direct-to-consumer advertising is, is instilling the notion in every human being that something is mentally wrong, something needs correction. That drives people to see a psychiatrist to help to mitigate this by dispensing the medication, by dispensing a drug that they have had pushed on them on countless television ads, countless magazine ads, and countless print ads that say, hey, there's something wrong with you. Go get help for it. Nowhere is this explosion of direct-to-consumer advertising more obvious than on television. It wasn't always this way. Until recently, advertising psychiatric drugs on TV was severely restricted. But in 1997, the FDA was persuaded to relax their rules on advertising in the media, in direct violation of Article 10 of an international treaty signed at the United Nations. Every five minutes there's a new drug ad. And this, this is not by accident, this is cold, canny, scientific design. The ads are fundamentally of two types. One type of ad is an um, effort to try to get the patient to take the drug company's drug. Abilify helps control symptoms of bipolar mania. And but then the second kind of direct-to-consumer advertising is the you're sick and you didn't know it advertising. You could be suffering from generalized anxiety disorder. Because they want to create sales, so what they're going to do is tell people, do you have these symptoms, do you have this disease, do you have this particular condition? But they hit it so hard on television that people say, ask your doctor, ask your doctor. Every commercial is a referral to the doctor. See, they're working for each other. Ask your doctor about Cymbalta. Depression hurts. Cymbalta can help. I can go to my doctor and say, here are my symptoms, and walk out with the prescription I want. I can ask for a drug by name and most of the time I'll be given drugs. So basically I'm my own doctor. The industry defends what it's doing by saying this is some kind of public health education campaign. And I'm sorry, I think if you go to an advertising agency, you're advertising. From the start, advertising psychiatric drugs on television has been phenomenally successful. In just the first three years, sales of psychiatric drugs skyrocketed by 250%. With grosses now hitting record levels, the drug industry is spending $2.9 billion a year in TV advertising alone. And once this drives people into the offices of psychiatrists, they can be hooked using another marketing ploy, free samples. The industry is willing to give out millions of dollars worth of free samples because it generates billions of dollars in sales. You want a prescription and you want Prozac written forever as a maintenance therapy. So you establish that with some free Prozac up front. Here, take this sample, it doesn't cost you anything, and then if you like it or if it seems to work, then we'll make a prescription, but you're going to have to pay for that prescription, the sample is free. So it's really a, a marketing technique. They got a cash cow. Zero refill means you've got to go back to the doctor for another consultation, for another subscription, and it just goes forever. This is business. This is money. Some direct-to-consumer marketing is camouflaged as public information. Psychiatrists regularly appear in the media, warning the public of the latest mental illness epidemics and hawking their latest breakthroughs. They write articles planted in newspapers and magazines that further their mental health awareness campaigns. Even patient advocacy groups claiming to offer unbiased information on psychiatric drugs are, upon closer inspection, pharmaceutically funded front groups managed by psychiatrists. They were started specifically by the, the industry themselves, and the public isn't informed of that. You know, it's basically a great big lie to the public that they think they're going to uh, a charitable organization that has their best interest at heart. Case in point, children and adults with attention deficit disorder, or CHAD, the biggest and most well-funded front group for the makers of stimulant drugs. 
Stephen Plogg is a former Chad executive. When I became the Chad uh, coordinator for Las Vegas, they gave me a manual, and in it it said, we want to provide unbiased information to help and support people who have ADD. For the next 30 days, we put 22 parents and their kids on a program with lab tests to find out what their causes were, eliminated their causes, they got prescription free, medication free, side effect free, and they got better with their self-esteem and they became actually happier, healthier, and more successful. Chad found out about this, called me up and says, we do not allow people to talk about nutrition in any of our seminars. We only prescribe going to a psychiatrist who will only prescribe drugs and therapy. So they said you can no longer work with us and they fired me for simply re recommending that parents go get a lab test, find out what the causes are and eliminate the causes. They do not allow that. They only allow medication and psychiatric treatment. Psychiatric patient advocacy groups also promote psychotropic drug treatment by broadly issuing public marketing surveys disguised as medical questionnaires. You can take a survey of maybe 16 questions and if you are a normal human being who's lived through ranges of emotions of normal life experience, if you've known the exhilaration of the birth of a child, a niece, a nephew, and the devastation of a divorce and the loss of dreams, and answer honestly to those questions, you will diagnose yourself as bipolar. And the instructions that come back along with the diagnosis or the warning that you're probably bipolar say, print this out and take it to your doctor. And how simple is it for anyone to go online answer typical life questions and be given a psychiatric disorder? Here are some randomly chosen volunteers, people of all ages leading normal lives. Do you feel sad, little unhappy, or down in the dumps? Sometimes. I've had periods of great optimism and other periods of equally great pessimism. Yeah, that happens a little bit. I get tired for no reason. Sometimes. My life is pretty full. Not really. For no apparent reason, I sometimes have been very angry or hostile. It's hard for me to concentrate on reading. I am restless and can't keep still. My heart beats faster than usual. I have trouble sleeping. Shortness of breath. Gained weight. Trembling hands. I have an idea that most of these are going to be sometimes. Everyone has. As in everybody? Somewhat. Somewhat. Just a little. Oh, yeah, I am. All right, my score totaled 42. Bipolar disorder, moderate to severe symptoms. Wow. The answer reflects on the presence of depressive symptoms. Currently suffering from an anxiety disorder. I may be suffering from bipolar 1. Minimal to mild depression. An obsessive compulsive disorder. Guess that means I'm a psycho. Guess I'll go to a psych. Try to see if um, I could work it out, get some meds or something. All told, 50% of these everyday people were a 